Hi, Kevin Greenway here from Tenzig. Just here to give you a demonstration of NOSV, our VMware Horizon Zero client. So in this particular video, I'm going to be demonstrating the setup of NOS, again, uh, configuring it to talk and communicate to a VMware Horizon connection server. Now, um, there are other videos in the lineup that uh, focus specifically around the general settings of, of NOS. Um, but again, this particular video is, is all focused around VMware Horizon. Um, so what you're seeing here on the screen is, is a zero client that's basically taken out of the box. We've plugged it into the network, we've plugged it into the monitor, and we've just booted it up. And, uh, and it's sat here waiting for some user input. Now, this typically is used in conjunction with the Tenzig Manager, where the Tenzig Manager would detect the presence of a, of a new, newly fresh booted uh, zero client, and it would push out its configuration template, and the user would then uh, see the Horizon Connection server login, which we'll see uh, shortly afterwards. But again, this in this particular demonstration, we're demonstrating the setup from a from a local perspective, all in the, in, in the uh, interest of seeing how simple and easy it is to set up. So the first step in this simple uh, sequence is specifying the, the country. Um, so there are a whole host of uh, different countries available, but uh, for now I'm just going to keep it on the US as default. And from here, I'm going to specify my particular time zone, which is Phoenix. And from here, today's date, which is 12.13, and today's date, which is 14th of April. Once I click on OK here, it then takes me towards the third and final step, which is specifying the VMware Horizon Connection Server URL into the server URL field. So this is typically the Horizon Connection Server um, or the Horizon Security Server. Now for this particular demo, I'm just gonna insert a singular server for now. I'm not gonna configure any other options, but we can come back into this afterwards. And that's it. So from a very basic setup, just the three simple steps, which in effect have configured our keyboard language in this case is English US. It's also, as we saw, configure the time and date, which I can get to um, by coming into the control panel and going into time and date. The time zone, as we saw, is, is also set. And the Horizon Connection Server URL, as we saw, is stored <clears throat> in the VMware Horizon settings area here. So really, really simple and straightforward. The client is, in effect, um, already in a, in a relatively locked down state and uh, towards the end of the demo we'll show you how to lock that down further. So from this point, assuming that I do have connection from the client towards the Horizon Connection Server, then I can just go ahead and I can sign in using my credentials just so that we can see what the experience is like. Now, one particular area that I'm getting here is the fact that it's failed to connect to my connection server. Uh, now that's because of the fact that we have an Active Directory um, generated certificate here. So I can either come from here and import that certificate onto the unit, or very simply, I can come back into here, into the advanced area, and I can change the security mode or the SSL mode from worn as it is on by default as per the regular Horizon client to accept. So once I click on OK and come back out of the control panel and attempt to sign back in, fingers crossed this time, it connects me into the connection server and from there I can then launch any available desktops or applications. So I'm just going to connect to this RDS based desktop here just again so that you can see the the login user experience. And there we go, so we're signed into a desktop and uh, by default, you can see I have access to the toolbar. Um, and these are all features that we can disable as, uh, as necessary. So I'm just gonna sign out of the desktop and then we can go back and explore some of the other features.
Okay, so I'm going to come back into the control panel and then as mentioned, come to VMware Horizon. So again, let's look at some of the, the commonly configured features. So under connection type, by default, we leverage the Horizon client and connect to either the Horizon connection server as well as the Horizon security server. We can also support connection to VMware Workspace ONE where um, instead of launching the default VMware Horizon client, we launch in effect a kiosk based browser which connects to Workspace ONE. Um, but again, for the purpose of the demo, I'm going to be demonstrating the Horizon client. Now, one of the other features of the firmware is that we can configure it to connect to multiple connection servers. which we can do very simply by just putting the comma delimited uh, field in here. So once we click on OK, and again, return back to the login screen, you can now see we've got this drop down box where we can, in effect, connect to either connection server. And again, if we return back to the horizon server settings, we can choose to force the URL selection. So what that does is rather than by default or in the previous mode that we saw, it uh, connects by default to the first specified server. It forces the user to select um, any one of those connection servers from the field. So I'm just gonna uh, disable that for now, just so that we can get back to a default setup. Okay, now another really commonly used feature is the default desktop name. So again, that desktop that we connected to in the previous setup, um, it was called RDS. So I'm gonna specify that in the desktop field here. And similarly, let's go in and just flick down to the login area here. So now, um, whereas it, I entered the domain name originally, what I want to do is put the domain in, but importantly, uh, protect that domain field. And I might even want to hide that domain field, which has become more of a feature in more recent versions of the VMware Horizon client. And secondly, I might want to cache the username. So this is very useful in, a, in an environment where security permitting, you want the login to cache the user that last logged into the, uh, the client to require them only to in, insert their password. Now you can of course force that um, or cache it locally here, but the caching obviously just caches the, the last username on each login. So once I back out of here and come back to the Horizon login, again, you can see that that's taken effect based on those settings that we put in to hide that domain field. So when we sign in now, it's authenticating. And as you can see, it's automatically launched our connection to that RDS based desktop. So really nice and straightforward. I've still got the toolbar here, so I can just use this to quit out of the, uh, the desktop session, which again returns me back to the Horizon client login. So let's again return back and, and look back at some of those other commonly set options. Now, whilst the Horizon client supports features, for example, the let's say that um, my password's expired, um, I return from vacation, I try to sign into the Horizon connection server, and uh, Active Directory warns me that my password's reset. What about if we're using a third-party password reset solution? So we have a feature here uh, that enables us to click reset password option and enter a password reset URL. So I'm just gonna put in a, a dummy uh, value here. So in fact, let's just make it Google. Let's click on OK, quit out of the control panel. Now you can see when I return to the sign in, I've got an additional icon here, which is our password reset. So again, this allows uh, deployments to support third party password solutions. So when the user clicks on this area, it in effect launches a browser, but importantly, it's a kiosk based, based browser that only goes to that specific URL allows the user to perform the action, and then once complete, they can quit out and then return them to their Horizon client login screen. So again, very simple and very secure. So again, I'm just gonna turn that off.
And then this time, let's have a quick look at what's available under log off actions. So under log off actions, we have act actions that where we log off of a session, it will either reboot the client or shut the client down. Um, so we do have quite a few deployments where they're particularly power conscious that um, they want to do a complete shutdown to, to uh, prevent the users from having to shut the, the, the clients down at the end of the day or similarly set scheduled tasks within the Tenzig manager to um, shut clients down according to a schedule. Okay, we also have an Improvata one sign uh, section. So this is just really to show you in this particular session that the firmware does also support Improvata single sign-on. Uh, there, there will be a separate uh, video demonstration around specifically this, this technology, um, but it is fully featured as you can see. Another common area is uh, RTAV. So this is a VMware feature real-time audio video, which allows the user to connect both headsets, so USB or analog headsets, as well as webcams uh, to the uh, Tenzig client and use RTAV, which is a compression technique, which forwards headsets and, uh, and webcams from the endpoint to the, uh, the, the desktop. Um, now this particular setting allows the user to adjust the camera settings. So where we're compressing the camera, we can specify the frame rate as well as the width and height. So the pixels of the, uh, the actual webcam. And we'll see later where the user can specify their preferred audio device uh, for when they're plugging things like USB headsets in, for example. Now this particular part is separate to other optimization features like, for example, the Skype for Business virtualization pack. So again, this is specifically where a deployment's leveraging the RTAV feature from VMware. We then have some protocol tuning features, one for Blast Extreme and another for PC over IP. Now these, both of these settings generally don't need to be tweaked, but they do, for example, for Blast Extreme, allow the user to disable H.264 on the client, which in effect would revert back to the, the regular uh, adaptive codec, so the JPEG or the PNG, or more recently the BLAST codec. Can also turn on the high color accuracy, which does fall back to software decoding from here as well. Under the PC over IP option, we can adjust um, the feature where we have a, a client side image cache, which is 300 megabytes by default, as well as the SSL protocol and ciphers. Now, if a customer is connecting to Horizon via a proxy server, they can be populated with this option here by turning that option on and then specifying the proxy host and, and proxy port. And that can also be used uh, in combination with um, certificate revocation, so CRL checking. Advanced is um, probably one of the most important areas for the VMware Horizon client settings. So the preferred protocol allows us to choose from the three available protocols within the VMware Horizon client. So um, by default, it's, it's set to in effect blank. So what that does is it takes the protocol that's set according to the VMware Horizon desktop pool settings. So if the desktop pool is set to leverage PC over IP by default, then we follow that. And similarly for Blast Extreme or RDP. Now again, if permitted in the VMware Horizon desktop pool um, that the user can override that protocol, we can force use of, for example, Blast Extreme in this case. But again, it requires the setting on the desktop pool to allow the user to override that. So if the administrator hasn't enabled that option and we choose Blast Extreme, um, it won't error out. It will, in effect, just connect via whatever um, is, is considered the default in according to the desktop pool. Now, another option just to explain, uh, this, this comes in quite commonly, is the shared storage option. Now, this actually refers to the client drive redirection feature of VMware. So uh, we find that and just to explain, there's really two ways to connect mass storage or thumb drives um, 
to the Tenzig client, which in effect get forwarded to the, the desktop or the, or the published application. So there's USB redirection, um, which is a feature that you'll find on clients such as the Teradici based clients. So they will uh, forward the USB drive or the thumb drive through USB and the drive will also appear as a physical drive with a physical drive letter. And there's also a more optimized feature called client drive redirection or shared storage, which actually maps the thumb drive almost as if it's a network drive. Now, whilst that mode is more efficient than, than USB redirection, a lot of deployments and a lot of users don't, don't uh, like that particular feature because it changes the user experience. It changes the way that the user um, interacts with that, with that thumb drive once it appears in uh, Windows Explorer on, on the VM. So we choose to turn it off by default and instead use USB redirection, which we'll see um, a bit, little bit further on. Now we saw already the SSL mode, which we can switch between accept, warn and reject. Uh, we also saw the use of the toolbar and one feature above it that's just worth mentioning is send control alt delete. So by default, when a user presses control alt delete, we actually send that key sequence towards the virtual machine but there are one or two deployments who like to turn that off and allow the user to specify whether they want to capture it locally or send it to the virtual machine once they're in session. Um, again, where required, users can adjust those toolbar settings so we can completely disable it to make it appear um, like, a, for example, a Terra, Terra Dici Zero client, which again, doesn't show the toolbar by default. Now, um, another really useful feature is the show host name. So this is used by and, and liked by a lot of Tenzig manager administrators. So where we choose to show host name, when we come out of the VMware Horizon settings and we come back to the Horizon connection login, you can see now that the terminal name is included in the top here. So this is really useful that where users call into the help desk uh, they can uh, refer their te their Tenzig name or the terminal name towards the uh, the person on the help desk who's assisting them, and allow them to easily find them through the Tenzig Manager console, and then shadow the user to assist them in whatever difficulty they're having, um, if they're in an, some sort of application that they're having difficulty with, etc. Um, etc. Et so really nice cool feature there. Uh, we've also got features like the end session key. So we can turn on control and F12, which is a common key sequence used to end the session, as opposed to either uh, clicking the toolbar that we saw before or logging off of session and also the power button. So the power button on the front of the Tenzig by default powers the unit down, but where the user chooses to end session, it will just disconnect the session as we saw before when I click the X on the toolbar. So again, really nice little tuning features here. And again, one feature that we added quite recently is where users prefer the use of USB audio. So again, just to explain this. So we talked before about RTAV. So by default, we leverage RTAV, which is an audio compression technique that if a user connects a headset, whether it's analog or USB, that is presented through RTAV into the virtual machine. The, the one real downside to RTAV is that the audio device doesn't appear as the native USB device. So some users have specific headsets where they like to leverage the native drivers for those headsets. So again, they might accept the fact that they're not compressing the audio through RTAV and instead passing it through USB audio, but then benefit from the fact that they can leverage their um, native USB drivers in the virtual machine. So again, options for, for both types of use cases. So that's a, a whistle-stop tour through the Horizon client settings. Again, some really nice, easy to use features. Um, and as you saw in the first sequence, a really simple setup sequence of, of three simple steps. 
So once we click on OK there, let's just touch on some of the other points that we touched on throughout the demonstration. So importantly under USB devices, and again this is covered in more detail in the general overview of the NOS firmware, but the USB device redirection allows us to specify different rules for USB device classes. And again, this can be area can be configured using the Tenzig manager as far as configuring this as a template for either groups or a deployment as a whole. But this allows us just to configure individual settings for this particular endpoint. So as we touched on before, if we're using mass storage, by default, this is set to include, which means that we pass any mass storage through to the virtual machine. Now, if you were using that shared storage option, which again is uh, back here under advanced. So if we turn that particular setting on, we then exclude mass storage from USB redirection. So that in effect will then pass everything through using the shared storage or the client drive redirection. And additionally, where we set that to include, if we plug in any thumb drives into the uh, firmware, they're recognized here. And although this is a, a HID, it's a mouse, um, you can see it appears as default. So default basically means that it's taking that particular permission or setting from the class above, and we can override that either with a, an include or an exclude, which overrides the class level. So again, really simple and straightforward as far as managing USB rules there. One of the other features that we talked about is the SSL mode. So again, under the horizon settings, under advanced, we had the SSL mode. So whilst I set this to accept, most or all deployments will normally leave it to warn. And for those even more security conscious, even set it to reject. If, for example, the certificate isn't, isn't verified once we initiate a connection to the connection server. So uh, where you are using in conjunction with certificates, again, set that to either warn as a minimum or reject. And then the certificates are available under the certificates area. So we have two different sources. We have the base certificates, which are the commercial certificates that are included in the firmware. And these are updated as required. Uh, so whenever the Tenzig firmware is updated, uh, these list of certificates that you see in here are commonly reviewed and updated and also permit users to, uh, or administrators to import certificates, um, including Active Directory certificates um, and any other types of certificates that are not already uh, included in firmware. So that sequence to import the certificate is very simple. Um, it is, again, part of a template, so where the Tenzig Manager is used and the Tenzig Manager captures these settings as a template, they would typically de be deployed to the client automatically. But it, in terms of initially getting that certificate onto the device, you can either import it through a thumb drive or send it down through the manager. So if you're importing it through a thumb drive, the first step that you want to take here is under security settings where you turn on the enable installation from USB storage. And when we click on OK here, um, at the point we insert a thumb drive that's uh, formatted with, with FAT32, uh, where we have where we detect the presence of a certificate on the root of the thumb drive. So common uh, file types supported are .cr, .crt extension, uh, preferably ASCII, uh, formatted, um, as well as a, a PFX uh, password protected file. So drop those onto the root of a thumb drive, plug it into the Tenzig, uh, and the Tenzig firmware detects the present of, presence of the certificate. It provides the option to import the certificate, and once imported, appears here in that list. And uh, from that point, you can use the Tenzig manager then to capture that as part of the template which includes all of these other settings that we've referred to. Now, importantly, once that certificate's on there, ensure that you disable this option to prevent other users from coming to the terminal afterwards to um, install or tamper with other settings, like, for example, wallpapers, um, um, as well as other certificates. And uh, whilst we're in the security settings, one of the definite go-to features is to lock down the control panel. 
So give the control panel a password that only you and your team of administrators are aware of and um, provide the user with any user controllable applets that we see here. So just to explain these, so rather than give the user access to the control panel, that's definitely something that you wouldn't want to do. But let's say we've talked about RTAV. So let's say that we want to give the user the ability of adjusting their um, audio properties. Let's say that we also want the user to be able to uh, adjust their display properties. So again, these options are available under the general control panel here, um, as well as display, where the user can adjust their display orientation. Now I'm running this on a virtual machine, so it, it doesn't give me the uh, the normal video driver options, but that ordinarily would allow the user to adjust things like the rotation and the placement of the, uh, the monitors that are connected. So whilst the user can adjust those settings under here, they also have access to the entire firmware. So we, we take the option of locking the control panel down and using or giving the user only access to those options that we permit or deem to be um, adequate for their needs. So once we click on OK here and we come back to the Horizon Connection server, you can see now that they can again adjust the sound configuration and the display but no other options and similarly when they come to the password area it requires them to insert a password before we take them into the regular control panel. Um, so just one very final thing in terms of sound. So again this is running on a virtual machine so we don't see the uh, the normal either internal audio or any USB connected audio but we can use this area to um, allow the user to specify their preferred audio um, and input device for the session as well as adjusting volume uh, from this area here and there's also some nice really easy to use features like enable the USB audio hot plug so where the users carry their hot desk in they're carrying their USB attached headsets around with them from desk to desk uh, we will recognize the hot plugging of those and pass those in, into uh, session and we can also um, disable things like the onboard speaker so if you're using the, the tensor client in, in a quiet area again disable that onboard speaker so that concludes the setup hope you found that really simple and straightforward and uh, please take your time to review our other videos that are available um, on youtube.com thank you for your time